Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. College basketball is back. Brennan Hartlove, Josh Kaplan. Josh, as we look at the lineups for both teams, it's about a 50-50 splitter as much as you can have with five players on the floor of returners and new phases for both of these teams. Yeah, both these teams will be testing different things. Season underway. Julian Reese and Aaron Gray. And the Kevin Willard era has tipped off in College Park. They start off with Jameer Young, now Dante Scott. Passes up top to the key to Juju Reese. Sophomore out of Baltimore on the right hand. Passes off to Don Carey. Step back three to open the game. Missed that one just a little bit long and spun out. So good quick look for Maryland. That's one of the things Kevin Willard talked about is the tempo of his team. Yeah, and a good hard screen set by Julian Reese there at the top. He's going to need a lot of those to get the shooters open throughout the season. Niagara will have their first offensive possession of the afternoon. It begins in the hands of Noah Thomason, the senior guard out of Houston. Akeem Hart assigned the defensive duties. Thomason through the lane, passes into the corner. Able to bring it under his control is Braxton Bayless. Now a mid-range two is missed short by Thomason, and the rebound pulled down by the Turks. Here's Don Carey. Now Young passes up top, Dante Scott. Young again. Reese at the top of the key. Passes off to Hakeem Hart. He stops, pops, got it. First points of the evening. And they go for the Maryland Terrapins in the hands of Hakeem Hart. Yeah, lots of off-the-ball movement there for the Terps. Lots of screens, lots of curls, and Hakeem Hart finds it in the mid-range. And now this is the type of pressing that you know Kevin Willard said he was going to be selective with. When you get to levels of uh, opposition like this, it's not always the best idea to go with a hard press from the beginning. But a three from the far side corner is missed off the iron. Offensive rebound, and there's the slam. It comes from Aaron Gray, sophomore forward out of Providence, Rhode Island. And we are leveled up at two. Here's Jameer Young on the right hand. He has one with the left hand, and he got it, but draws the foul in the process. That will go on Aaron Gray, his first of the night. The big thing for me there was look how fast the Terps got the ball up the court. As soon as the dunk came through, they got it up there quickly and get a good shot for Jameer Young to show good patience as he waits in the lane and tries to find this mid-range, find this little space for himself, pulls up and gets a little knock on the head. I was actually Noah Thomason who picked up the foul rather than Aaron Gray. First trip to the line in a Maryland uniform for Jameer Young. And the first one doesn't quite rattle home. He shot about 89% from the stripe, the transfer from Charlotte. He was two-time first-team All-Conference USA in his three years for Charlotte. Now on the second attempt, and he makes no mistake with that one. Now here's that press for Maryland as Agra struggles to get it across the timeline, eventually does so in the hands of Thomason. Here's Bayless, defended by Young. High intensity defense for Maryland with less than 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Bayless through the lane, had it knocked down, stays with Niagara, and eventually gets a clean shot off. And the Purple Eagles take a 4 to 3 lead. Here's Maryland looking to respond on the other end. Dante Scott, now for Don Carey. Passes up to the top of the key for Reese. Hakeem Hart puts one up for three, and he got it. First three of the season for Maryland. And Hakeem Hart knocks that one down to put the Terps back in front. Already seen a long jump shot and a three for Hakeem Hart. If he's shooting the ball like that this year, good things are going to happen for the Terrapins. Hakeem Hart shot about 53% from the floor last year, averaging just a smidge under 10 points per game. He will be a big, big part of Maryland's offense this season. One of the few returners from last year's squad. Here's Bayless now at the top of the key. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Bayless going up against Young. That one was off the backboard, but didn't quite get a good bounce. But here's a positive bounce for Niagara. A difficult shot and unfortunate bounce in the end. But Niagara stays with it, gets a new shot clock as well. No foul call down low is Atiorio trying to battle for it. Eventually, after many askings, Maryland comes up with it. Here's Carey now. Passes off to Young. Tries to get a little bit of separation. Now Hakeem Hart. Dante Scott. He'll have a go from the top of the key. And he got it. Dante Scott. His first points of the season. And it's a triple from out top. Best part about that one, no hesitation from Dante Scott. Got in the shooter's pocket, went right up with it. 
Shot only 29% from three last year, did Dante Scott. Not the biggest part of his game, but we've seen Maryland players, as they progress in their career, start to round out their game a little bit. Here's Bayless. It's the pump fake. Now back up top for another three. That one missed long, and a comfortable rebound for Maryland. A lot of possession down in Maryland's end. Here's Young. Kicks up top. Dante Scott fakes the three that time. Puts up a mid-range two and can't quite rattle it home. There are about three Niagara players battling for the rebound. And it was Jameer Young who came by and stole it out from underneath the noses of all three and draws the foul. So we have a timeout on the floor at the Xfinity Center. Maryland on a 6-0 run over the last two minutes in change. They lead nine big key guys throughout the year. There is a look there at Ian Martinez, the first Costa Rican to play Division I men's basketball at a major university. But we pick things up with Jameer Young at the line for the Maryland Terrapins, the graduate transfer from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. And he sinks the first attempt. Young was a standout at DeMatha Catholic High School, less than four miles here from campus, and played an integral role in DeMatha winning three championships in 2018, including a state championship. One of the first DeMatha players to join this Maryland program in about 20 years or so, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. But Kevin Willard put a very, you know, high focus on recruiting kind of in that DMV. He said he wants to get Maryland guys, and he started off hot with Jameer Young and Don Carey, two guys from the Upper Marlboro area. Pass into the key. Quick ball movement here by Niagara. Julian Reese collapsed on the play, but it's Sam Iorio who puts it up and in. And it's 11 to 6 now. Hakeem Hart passes off to Jameer Young. He has a go, a three from the near side. That one was a bit left to the mark, and it's pulled down by the Purple Eagles. Maryland drops back into their set. Here's Noah Thomason. He was tripped up as he was trying to storm the lane. The first Maryland foul of the evening. And now we will see Ian Martinez joined in the game by Jahari Long, a transfer from Seton Hall. Came over with Kevin Willard, but Kevin Willard said to his Seton Hall team once he announced he got this Maryland gig that nobody's coming with me. But then it was Jahari Long who put his name in the transfer portal, and as soon as Kevin Willard saw that, he called Long up and asked him to join the Terrapins. Here's Gray, passes up top to Iorio for Niagara. 15 on the shot clock. Going baseline, a quick pass out. Again, this quick ball movement by Niagara. Here's Bayless with eight to shoot. A floater, no good. A rebound pulled down by Hakeem Hart. Terps looking to go quickly down the other end. Passes off to Dante Scott. Pulls up and goes to Ian Martinez. First touch of the ball. He gets the fake and draws the foul, Ian Martinez. And the Niagara player that was tangled up there with Martinez is a bit slow to his feet as we take another look. Really good pump fake here for Ian Martinez. Gets his defender up in the air. I believe that was Thomason. And Thomason looks like he might have just caught one in the face or just a really bad landing. Never like to see those, but good to see him get back up. Especially when you're landing right on your back in that spot is very, very difficult. But Ian Martinez at the line for the Terrapins. Shot about 71% from the stripe last season, did Martinez. And now we'll have a couple more substitutions as Patrick Million will check in for the Terrapins to transfer from Western Michigan and St. Francis, now ending up at Maryland, his third school, the grad transfer from Toronto, Ontario. Josh, you were talking about Ian Martinez, and you know, Kevin Willard told us, he was like, you know, everybody talks about Martinez's offense, which I kind of find comical. He's, as you said, our best defender. So he will get those tough assignments throughout the season, which obviously will look different against Niagara and as you get into Big Ten play. But he's a guy that and you've noted it to me and the public that he's a very good athlete. Yeah, you watch him doing warm-up dunks. The last thing they do in warm-ups <laughs> is watch Ian Martinez throw down a casual windmill. Yeah. I mean, the guy is, has one of the craziest bounces I've seen in person. But now Niagara will bring it down the floor to the other end as they trail 13-6 to with 14 and a half to play here in the first half. Quick pass into the middle. Bayless is underneath the hoop. Thought about going for the reverse. Kicks it out to the far side. Great bounce pass. A beautiful basket by Niagara. Tic-tac-toe. And now the Turfs look to respond. Keem Hart holds onto it. Martinez motions in the middle. Now here's Long. Dante Scott thought about it, faked it, pulled it back out. Now here's Martinez. 13 on the shot clock. Takes it out to Long. Now Scott from the near side has one and got it. 
two threes on the night for Dante Scott. And Maryland goes up 16 to eight. Good ball movement on both sides. Niagara playing a little bit of tic-tac-toe, as you said, getting it under the lamp as you see a turnover here. Quick pass to Hakeem Hart. Dumps it down low. Dante Scott, cool as you like. And we have a timeout on the floor. Dante Scott up to eight points in this game already. Kevin Wood said we can expect to see some full court pressure. Back here in College Park, a pretty good turnout as it was a slow trickle into the Xfinity Center. But the Maryland faithful out in full voice here in College Park as we pick things up. Maryland up 18 to eight over Niagara. We've seen the entrance of Noah Batchelor, the freshman guard from Frederick, Maryland, into the game for the Terrapins. Niagara has the ball, and here's Lance Irving, who's also checked in for the Purple Eagles. Kick to the corner for Bayless. Thought about it, faked it, drives inside on the right hand, off the window, and good. A cheeky finish there from Braxton Bayless, the junior from Ankeny, Iowa. Here's Long for his first Maryland points, and it bounces in. Nervy moments, but it eventually goes in for Johari Long, the transfer from Seton Hall. And with that one shot, he already matches his season high from last year. Getting a little shooter's roll. Must like the glass here in College Park. Now Braxton Bayless, 12 on the shot clock. Passes off to Irving. Now here's David Mitchell also into the game for Niagara. More on him in a moment. Five seconds to shoot. Bayless fakes it, bounce pass down low, and they didn't get it off in time. We take another look at Jahari Long's first basket in a Maryland uniform. Yeah, just a good curl up towards the top of the key. No hesitation, goes up for a three. Kevin Williams said his team's gonna shoot a lot of threes, and we're seeing that so far. Jahari Long had a pretty tough time at Seton Hall through no fault of his own. He struggled with the season-ending injury, but also we talked to Kevin Willard on Friday, and Jahari Long had COVID twice, and he was in isolation for 28 straight days in a single room by himself. And Willard said he's just never really recovered. Bachelor, first points in the Maryland uniform. He got it as well. Noah Bachelor, welcome to college basketball. Kevin Willard's first recruit at Maryland, showing why he had Willard's confidence. The IMG head coach where Noah Bachelor played high school said he was one of the best shooters I've ever had. And we see Martinez find him here in the corner. Absolutely zero hesitation, goes right up with it. First player ever signed by. Could even play a small five if the Terrapins need him to. A million of veteran of the college game playing over a hundred games in college so far. He brings some needed experience to this Maryland team. So we pick things up with Niagara and the basketball. It's Braxton Bayless, who's been incredibly active just on the offense. Only has two points to his name so far on one of three shooting. But certainly he's been making a lot happen. The pass inside down low. A new player for Niagara gets a basket. That's Keith Kiner, the transfer from Three Rivers College out in Missouri. Now the five on the floor for Maryland. Martinez, Reese, Carey. Long and Bachelor. Here's Carey. Sending Martinez in motion down the baseline. 15 on the shot clock. Comes up top to Long. Thought about it. And lost it off his foot. And Niagara scoops it up. That's Aaron Gray diving to the ground. Yeah, just some sloppy play there. Ball not moving as quickly as it has been for the Terps. You see what happens when the ball starts moving slow. You let your opponent get some pressure on the ball and it gets inside your head. That one, Jahari Long just completely loses the handle and then commits a foul. Perhaps a bit of nerves for Jari Long as well. Just, you know, you talked about he only played a handful of games last year. Coming into a new environment on a bit of a bigger stage. And he has shown his promise already with that big three. He's one of one from the floor. And we have a foul in the key against Maryland. I believe they're going to get Julian Reese for coming through the back of the player he was guarding. Those are some of the fouls we saw last year from Julian Reese that we really don't want to see this year if you're Kevin Willard. Those are freshman fouls, and now that he's grown into his sophomore year, you'd like to see a little bit more composed version of him. Lobbed up to the top of the key. Now here is Keith Kiner, the 6'8 junior from Sparta, Illinois. And that one will go back to Maryland. You know, Josh, I've been keeping an eye on Kevin Willard over there as we take another look 
at this you know, tip. Martinez was right in there, but it does go favorably for Maryland. I've been keeping an eye on Kevin Willard. He is incredibly active and animated on that Maryland bench, as advertised. Here's Jameer Young spinning through the key. Tough one. That one's swatted down by David Mitchell. Now here come the Purple Eagles. Kiner goes low, double team. That went off the back of Bachelor and will stay with Niagara. We're going to see the re-entrance of Dante Scott here for the Terrapins. But you see the Terrapins on defense there. They were active. The reason no Bachelor got hit in the back with that pass because he came over to slide over. As we see the good defense from the Purple Eagles, nowhere for Jameer Young to go as he gets swatted away. But as I was saying, it hit the back of... Noah Bachelor because he was rotating over. Here's Aaron Gray at the top of the key, the transfer from Southern New Hampshire University. Now Iorio. And very nervy moments there for Niagara, almost a backcourt violation. Bayless running into some trouble with Julian Reese. Five seconds on the shot clock. Gray, pump fake, goes low, runs into trouble, and draws the foul. And we talked about Maryland going on a bit of a scoring run. They've made four of their last five, and Niagara's made three of their last three, a bit more efficient on this end of the floor. Yeah, and there we see Julian Reese coming over, not necessarily straight up when the contact's made. Arms kind of overextended. Going to be a foul call every time. That is the second of the evening on Julian Reese so far as we go to the line. And Aaron Gray shot about 77% from the strike last year as he misses the first attempt. We talked about transfer from Southern New Hampshire University. As Hakeem Hart will check back into the game, as does Patrick Emelian. And now we see one of those smaller lineups for Maryland. You have Scott, Hart, and Emelian all in, all 6'7 or 6'8, but no 6'9 or 6'10 guy. And that one rattles home fortuitously as we see the entrance of Shane Lancaster, or excuse me, Bryce Moore coming back into the game out of Carmel Catholic High School in Round Lake, Illinois. Here is Jameer Young for the Terrapins. He gets the screen from Carey and Emelian. Carey has to go from the top of the key. Missed that one towards the left. A fight for Dante Scott. A crucial tip back into Maryland's possession. And he gets it back on the far side. Tries to create a little bit of separation. Kicks it all the way over to the near side. Akeem Hart was closed down quickly. Begins his dribble on the left hand. Loses it. Young picks it up. A long two. And that one was in and out. But Dante Scott picks it back up for Maryland. And a new shot clock. Good effort on the glass there from the Terps, which is one of the things Kevin Wood emphasized to us. He needs his team to be active on the glass. Not quite on the same wavelength, the Terrapins on that one. And that is something that Kevin Willard talked about, how he, he has 13 guys that played five different styles last year. So coming into the new program and trying to gel, get everybody on the same wavelength is going to take a little bit of time. But Niagara very much in the same position. We talked about 11 new faces on this roster, six of which are transfers. So here's Irving. Bounce pass down low to Mitchell. Six on the shot clock. Back up top. Here's Moore. Step back, and he got it. Right as the shot clock was expiring, Bryce Moore picks up his first points of the night. I think he chalked that one down to good defense, better offense. What a tough shot yeah. by Moore. Here's Don Carey at the top. Still searching for his first points in a Maryland uniform. A long three from Dante Scott, and that one wasn't that far off but a comfortable rebound in the end for the Purple Eagles. Little heat check there for Dante Scott, <laughs> looking good on the, in the early going. And there's a block down at the other end. Quick feed down to Hakeem Hart, who goes up and throws it down. Seven points so far tonight for Hakeem Hart. And Maryland is up 26-15, eight to play in the half. Here's Bayless, one of four on the night so far. Here's Iorio down low, eight to shoot. Goes up and over top of Emelian and draws the foul. That'll be the first on Pat Emelian. So we will step aside here in College Park. The Terps have an 11-point lead with under eight to play in the first half. You're watching. Big Ten experience with the Boston Celtics, but a coach who has grinded his way to a job like the Maryland job. So he brings, as you said, a lot of experience to this program. 
and he kind of talked about how he's had a bunch of different first times at a lot of different programs now at this point. So he's kind of taken bits and pieces from all those to bring it to College Park. Iorio clean on the first attempt. A graduate student from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Now he is a guy that has been in the college game for a while. His collegiate debut was November 10th, 2017. It has been 1,823 days since Sam Iorio first stepped on a college basketball court, which is kind of crazy. I'm not sure I could do that math, so good job <laughs> to you, Brendan. Well, we can just take my word for it. The journalism major's math skills may not be up to scratch, but I Googled it. So Here's Dante Scott working in the high post. He looks to back his way down, 12 on the shot clock. Kicks it up, Ian Martinez. That one a bit long and pulled down by Noah Thomason. In his second season at Niagara, played his freshman season at Houston Baptist and then Butler Community College before joining up with the Purple Eagles. Here he is now as he dumps that one to Sam Iorio. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Long two is no good into the hands of Jameer Young. Quick outlet. Here's Akeem Hart. Martinez, pump fake, goes baseline. Passes back into the middle. And a quick release there off the front of the rim from Patrick Emelian. And Josh, you want to tell us what the student section might be commenting on behind us right now? I'm going to go with Emelian's <laughs> unorthodox shooting form. We saw him in warm-ups. He can't hit a three-pointer. Just maybe a little nervous on that one. See, he raises that straight up over his head before he releases that ball. Here is Bryce Moore for Niagara. Eight on the shot clock. Got to go quickly. Storms the lane. Loses footing almost a little bit, and it's stolen there by Martinez. There's that great defense Kevin Willard talked about. All the way over, Dante Scott goes up with the right hand and gets it to go. Dante Scott up to 10 points on the night, and we still have six minutes left in the first half. That's good footwork there from Scott. And Thomason storms the lane, left it a little short as Martinez looks to come down quickly. He's doing so by himself. And that one just squeezed its way out of the hands of Jameer Young. Take another look at that great hustle play by Martinez. Yeah, and then good vision to find Scott here on the wing, who goes with a pump fake, jumps around his defender. I think previous years of Dante Scott, we might have seen him try to just go through that defender, but little hop step floater from Scott, a pretty move. We talked about how Dante Scott has lost almost 30 pounds in the offseason. Dante was saying, you know, obviously he feels more in shape and things like that, but it's also a matter of working on his lateral movement. Your weight distribution is different there, and there's a quick bucket by Niagara. That's David Mitchell. And then Niagara was on a three-minute scoring drought up until that point. But going back to Dante Scott, that lateral movement, you even commented on it, that good foot movement from Dante Scott as he looks comfortable in the key. Ian Martinez, another in and out, rebound by a million. And he draws the foul. Yeah, good play overall there from the Turks. Tante Scott again penetrating the lane. And then a kick out to Ian Martinez, who we probably wouldn't have seen take that shot last year, but goes up with it. And then a great offensive rebound from Emelian. A big man's rebound, as we'd like to say. <laughs> so now the real question is, is it the same release from the free throw line? You would think yes. And it is. And he's clean on the first attempt. Patrick Meehlin, we talked about, was from Toronto, Ontario. So how does a player like that end up at Western Michigan, St. Francis, and then ultimately at Maryland? Uh, and it, his sister, Gabrielle, actually played soccer for Howard University in D.C. So he said he was kind of familiar with the area. And when this opportunity came up, he said he just could not say no to joining Kevin Willard in the program he's building here in College Park. I think that's something Kevin Willard has done right away with this program is bring it back and say, hey, this is Maryland basketball. Everybody should want to come and play here. Here's Thomason. 30-19 is the lead for the Terps. Here's Iorio. Six on the shot clock for Bayless. Through the lane. Dumps it down low. Iorio throws it down comfortably. So quick points to bring it back within double digits. Here's Scott. Now Jameer Young. Those bodies go spilling to the turf, and it's an offensive foul. Well, it's proverbial turf. I know we're on hardwood, but 
just a common phrase as things clear up here in Maryland's offensive half of the court. Julian Reese checks back into the game, as does Don Carey. And now this is the, where things get interesting for Kevin Wood. He has both of his big men who have played so far, Patrick Emelian and Julian Reese, both have two fouls. So where do you go from here? It looks like he's going to trust Julian Reese to not get his third before halftime. Worth noting, Jahari Long also has two on the night so far. Here's Ioria. Thomason. Good handling there on the far side. He looks to penetrate the key. Draws the double team. Iorio. A little step back two, and that one falls out. Bayless thought about it, but it's a new shot clock for Niagara. Thomason. Eight to shoot. Puts it up. Missed it long. Dante Scott through the lane with the left hand off the window. No good. And scooped up by Niagara. Scott trailing behind the play. Advantage in numbers for Niagara. And he comes from behind to make the block. Dante Scott, who was trailing behind the play, makes up ground, knocks it out of play. And we have a timeout at the Xfinity Center. Just all out block right there. There's still time. There is still time with 341 left to play here in the first half. Brennan Hartlove at Josh Kaplan. So thankful you could join us for this Monday night tip off of the new season. We pick things up with Niagara. Trying to get it in, lobbed it all the way up to Aaron Gray who pulls it under his control. Hands off to Bayless, the transfer from Indian Hills Community College. They went 53 and 11 overall in his two seasons with that program and there's a quick two points for him now up to four he's had so many opportunities but only the second time he's gotten on the scoreboard so far tonight he's been very active tonight here's noah bachelor five on the floor reese bachelor long carry and scott a float of air is no good swatted around and picked up by niagara and the five on the floor for niagara bayless iorio mitchell Thomason and Gray. Here's Gray going baseline. Runs into some trouble. Clean block there, and Bachelor picks it up. Here's Long. Bachelor thought about it, spins, keeps it with Long, and the Terps will slow it down. And a pass intended for Julian Reese is kept by Maryland through Long. Dante Scott. He will slow things down as they have 12 on the shot clock. Here's Jahari Long. Five seconds on the shot clock. Puts it up off the backboard and gets it to go. Up to five points on the night is Jahari Long. His first game is Maryland Terrapin. Make a confident move. They're forced out of the lane, but uses the glass to his advantage and banks one in. In the hands of Bayless and blocked there by Long. And referees say that Long got a touch of the ball. No backcourt violation as they have 10 on the shot clock. Here's Gray working on the left hand, backs it out. Reese doing the defending. Thomason drives on the right hand, puts up the floater with the left and swatted down by Julian Reese. Thought he had it in his hands, didn't quite. And Iorio commits the offensive foul. Dante Scott on the receiving end of that move. Yeah, good slide here from Scott. Gets his feet set well outside that restricted area and draws the charge off of Iorio. Re-entrance of Lance Irving and Keith Kiner for the Purple Eagles. And a million is up for the Terps as well. As you get a look there at Greg Paulus. Talk about his playing time at Duke. He was also the quarterback at Syracuse for his final year of collegiate athletics. You talked about he was the assistant coach at Ohio State for a while. Ohio State went two and four against Maryland in that time. The Terps got the better of him as a coach, not quite as a player. Back in those ACC days where they were foes with Duke. They still are, but you don't get that matchup nearly as frequently as we used to. Here's Dante Scott, 12 on the shot clock. Decides to keep it, passes off to a million. Scott with eight to shoot. And he puts it up. 
Left it way short, comes off the front of the rim. And into the hands of Bayless. Scoring drought of over two minutes for Ni Niagara at this point. Bayless tries to end it, and he does. With a fortuitous bounce on that basket. Now we are under a minute to play, and it's 32-25. It's Jahari Long. And we're going to have a timeout as we tick down towards the end of the first half. The Terps are shooting pretty good, 43% to Niagara's 39. Some really nice ball movement on him. Maryland's rotating a lot, forming a lot of switches, but Niagara's sticking with it. Under 45 seconds left in the half. Here's Jameer Young for the Terrapins. A million. Dante Scott gets the fake. We'll hand off to Akeem Hart. 11 on the shot clock for Young. Screen from a million. Drives the lane, and he got it. Wasn't the prettiest release, but they all count the same as Maryland is up 34-25 and under 20 seconds left in the half. Shot clock is off for Niagara. Seven seconds left in the half in the hands of Bayless. Will he keep it himself? He does off the backboard and in with a second to go in the half. And that will take us into the locker rooms. Maryland up 34 to 27. It's been fun so far, Josh. Very back and forth affair so far here in college. For Maryland uh, than it is on the Niagara end where Bayless has eight and Iorio also has eight. I think the biggest thing is you look at the shot attempts. Dante Scott's attempted eight shots, by far the most of any Terrapins player. So we've swapped ends and we get underway here in the second half. Niagara in the all-black uniforms with the purple trim. Maryland in the all-white red Maryland flag trim. Back in the hands of Bayless. He has eight points. He was stuck on two for quite a while there in the first half, but Josh, you alluded to it. There's a nice assist from him for Aaron Gray who is now up to seven points on the afternoon. But you kind of talked about how Niagara was able to fight back at the end of that first half with a lot of action coming through Bayless. But here's Juju Reese going towards the hole. Thought he was fouled in the process. Referees disagree, and Bayless brings it back down the floor. Here's Thomason. Goes to Gray, kicks it to the corner now. Thomason gets it back. Ten on the shot clock. Gray drives the lane. Puts it up. A floater. No good. Falls into the welcoming arms of Jameer Young, who looks to go incredibly quickly. Dishes it off. Fake from Carey. He got it. First points in a Maryland uniform for the transfer, Don Carey. And the Terps are up 37-29. Yeah, thought he might have thrown up his rhythm with that pump thing because he was wide open to start with, but it doesn't seem to matter. Donald Carey gets his first points of the night. Transfer from Georgetown. He's played at four schools, Don Carey. Mount St. Mary's, Siena, Georgetown, and now here at the University of Maryland. Thomason. Now Bayless. Iorio. It's a drive on the left hand, switches to the right, backs up Julian Reese. Reese. Was being nervy down there, but it's called an odd now here at the University of Maryland. Thomason. Now Bayless. Iorio. It's a drive on the left hand, switches to the right, backs up Julian Reese. Reese was being nervy down there, but it's called an offensive foul and goes back to the Terrapins. Iorio called for the elbow. Yeah, Julian Reese doing a good job there holding his ground. That's what you're supposed to, especially on three fouls. He has to be very careful as we see Iorio coming in here. And that is now the third on Iorio. So two of the big men in this game are playing with fire in the foul category. Here's Hakeem Hart, 20 on the shot clock for Maryland. And not quite on the same wavelength. The two returning Terrapins, Gray, bounce pass down low, and that one does not roll. There's a foul on the floor. So that was actually called goaltending. And it will remain 37-31. Or, excuse me, 37-33 after the goaltending call. 
seemed like the referees were almost on different pages there for a second as well. But we picked things back up with Maryland and an all of a sudden four point game. And in comes the seven footer for Niagara, Harlan Obioha. Good move there in the paint and he gets the roll. Jameer Young. Good strong move from Young there and looking over at Kevin Willard. He's kind of upset a foul wasn't called on that one. Here's Bayless. Pulls up from the free throw stripe, can't get the roll. The seven footer goes up and pulls it down. Obi Oha, seven foot freshman from Hoxie, Kansas. Hoxie, Kansas has a population of about 1,200 people, which is less than half of the capacity of this arena. And that one off the glass and in from Bayless. He's now up into double figures. Young pulls the trigger, missed that one wide left at the mark. Scott gets the board, kicks out, carry a three. That one rolls over top as well. Terps struggling to find the bottom of the bucket. As now Niagara is out shooting Maryland 46 to 42 percent. Quickly. How things can change. That one scooped up by Hakeem Hart, and a foul will be called. And we have a timeout on the floor. It's getting closer. 39-35 is the Maryland lead as we go into this break. You're watching Big Ten Hoops on Big Ten Plus. Players both from the Lefty Drizel era to the Gary Williams era in the Mark Turgeon era as well. And he's kind of pulled opinions a little bit and gotten thoughts and feedback from all the different players from wanting to change the logo back to the original Terrapin logo uh, to, you know, play a little bit quicker or slow it down, play a bit more zone. All things that he has kind of taken into account and seem to mesh with his opinion of what he wants this program to become. Ian Martinez could not get that one to go. And Young puts up the floater. He's able to find the bottom of the bucket that time. Yeah, that Ian Martinez bucket just felt like there was a lid on the basket for Maryland and Jameer Young lifts that lid. Ian Martinez, both of his points so far have come from the free throw line. He is 0 for 3 from the floor and 0 for 2 from behind the arc. But he gets the steal there. Will pass it off to the far side. Scott readjusts. Couldn't quite get it. Second time is the charm for the Maryland Terrapins. And Niagara takes a timeout at the Xfinity Center. Quick pressure from the Terps off the basket from Jameer. Head coach of the Maryland basketball team that won that national championship all those years ago. And Willard and Williams have actually become fairly close since Willard has taken over. They've been going out to dinner. They've been playing golf a lot together. And Willard the other day said that a lot of the success they've been able to have in practice so far has been due to Gary Williams and the advice and guidance he has been able to give. And, you know, he talked about for as angry as that guy gets, jokingly, everybody really seems to love Gary Williams. And, for anybody that's watched Maryland basketball throughout that era, just know, knows how much he means to this program, and that's why his name is on the hardwood. Five seconds to shoot for Niagara, and there's an air ball on that one. And Aaron Gray will not hear the end of that from the Xfinity faithful. Hey, going back to your point on Gary Williams, anybody who's around our age grew up on the two Gs, Gary and Grievous. <laughs> Those are the guys who we grew up with, and that's who we hope to see guys like that, a coach like that, and a player like that come back through this program. You guys that are still around quite a bit, and you know that's one of the things, as we said, Kevin Willard trying to embrace at Maryland all the players and head coaches and staff that have come before, and what that advice and guidance can lead this team to in the future. Julian Reese draws the foul down low as he was trying to muscle his way to the basket. Yeah, Julian Reese undersized against the seven foot two eighty Harlan Obiaha, just does well to stay strong with it, go up with it, and draw a foul. So Julian Reese heads to the stripe. He shot about 80% from the free throw line a season ago. His freshman campaign in College Park. We talked about how Kevin Willard said he hasn't even scratched the surface of how good he can be as he's off the mark on the first attempt. And we see Sam Iorio come back into the game for Niagara, replacing the seven-footer Obi Oha. And Julian Reese, consensus top 50 recruit Kevin Willard again, expecting big things from him this year. Reese is scoreless on the night until that free throw. He's up to one point. 
We talked about how his minutes have been limited, being on 3,000, things like that. But he finally finds himself in the scoring column as Maryland's press goes into effect, making it incredibly difficult for Niagara. But eventually, Maryland drops off. As they lead by a nine points here, with about 13 and a half to go. Here's Irving. Irving gets it back. Bounce pass in the middle. Good spin there by Thomason. Kicks it all the way over. The fake pass by Bryce Moore midair. Not too shabby. And that one didn't quite come off as Maryland looks to push the tempo. Ian Martinez in the corner. Elects to go inside. Kicks it out to Akeem Hart. Now Dante Scott in the corner. Looks to find his way inside. And Bryce Moore went down to the ground and found the ball at his feet and picks it up for Niagara. Yeah, refs just letting that one go. Could have been a flop warning, could have been an offensive foul, but decided to go with a no call. Here's Thomason. Ten seconds to shoot against Julian Reese. Reese goes straight up and does not fall for Niagara. Almost given away and it it is given away by Julian Reese, so it goes back to Ni Niagara underneath their basket. And Julian Reese exasperated. Yeah, good initial work here for Reese to stay straight up and then tries to find the rebound off the second attempt and grabs it and looks like he lost his balance kind of as he came down with it. This is the second time that Julian Reese has appeared to have a rebound in his clutches and isn't quite able to reel it in. Lobbed up to Gray, and a million is back in for the turf and makes his life difficult. Reese against Iorio. Two players on three fouls, and that one swatted. Jameer Young comes flying through and bats that out of the sky. Stays with Niagara down low, and eventually into the hands of Akeem Hart, looking to go quickly the other way. Hart through the lane, up with the left hand, draws the foul, and stumbles into the spectators. Active hands lead to fast breaks, and that was all active hands for about five or six seconds there from the Terps as they're just poking away at this ball, just hoping something good comes from it. Just consistently quick hands, and Akeem Hart's the one who comes up with it. Draws some contact as he's going up looking for the foul. Almost has the end one. So Akeem Hart at the line, played in every game last season for the Terrapins, clean on the first attempt. Shot about 85% from the stripe last year. Akeem Hart scored in double figures in 10 straight games last year for the Terrapins going from December 1st to January 15th. And he'd only had nine double figure games in the 55 games before that and just went on its hair, finding a lot of consistency in his junior season. And I think a part of that was him getting more comfortable with his body two seasons ago. Went from 6'6 six, six to 6'8, six, so it needs that year to get redeveloped into a new body. And he's going to be a big player for Kevin Willard going forward. He's the second leading returning scorer for the Terps from the team a year ago. 46-35 is the Maryland lead with 12 to play in the contest here, the opening game of the college basketball season. There's actually 378 college basketball games being played today. We have a jump ball call and it will go back to Niagara in a timeout. So there are 378 basketball games going on between the men's and the women's game. We are very glad that you chose to spend it with us. Maryland on a 7-0 run in the last play of the Maryland Terrapins. Very thankful that he did so he could end up putting up 11 points in College Park so far in his Terrapin debut. And that's kind of one of the things is early on in the season, you know, Kevin Willard, he's, he's had these players in practice for a while, but he hasn't really seen them outside of a practice situation or a scrimmage situation. So very good early test in the season for the Terps. Ian Martinez still can't find a bucket from the floor. Hakeem Hart has a go. That one rattles off long. And Ian Martinez got up there. You talked about it earlier, but that was that was impressive. He didn't get much on the end of that jump, but it looked nice. I mean, the effort is there from the guy. <laughs> He's got some absolute bunnies, man. So we pick things up with Niagara inbounding in their own half. And the Purple Eagles are on a scoring drought of about four and a half minutes now. They've had four turnovers in that same amount of time. They've only made one of their last seven shots from the floor. And on the other end, Maryland on a 7-0 run in the last three and a half minutes. 
Here's David Mitchell. Jahari Long doing the defending. Finds its way to Moore, and that one's no good as the shot clock was winding down. Maryland looking to push the tempo the other way. Long behind the back, takes it himself, had it poked out, picked up by a million. And the Terps will slow things down. Every Maryland player that has touched the floor has scored for the Terps so far. And Hakeem Hart tries to win it back, almost does so. A million comes up with it and applies the finish. 9-0 run for the Maryland Terrapins in the last four minutes and change. Here's Bryce Moore, draws the double team. Bayless into the key. Doesn't have many options and elects to lob it back up top to Bryce Moore. Here's Thomason. Three fouls on the night to his fellow three foul counterparts. Make it, oh, that's going to be a foul on a million. So that will be his third as we take a look back at that hustle play from Maryland on the other end. Yeah, the best part about that play is Akeem Hart's the one who lost the ball and picked it back up for the turf. That's the effort that Kevin Willard wants to see from his team, and Noah Bachelor loves it. <laughs> Don Carey and Jameer Young back into the game for Maryland. Here's Iorio. Scoring drought reaching six minutes now for Niagara, and it will continue. Young pulls that one down out of the air. Looks to go into the left hand and had it lost, poked out. But last off a of Terrapin, and it stays with Niagara. 9 0 run for Maryland last five minutes. Yeah, the Terps just playing really good defense. I think that's why it's a 9 0 run. It's not because Niagara's missing open shots, it's because Maryland is getting hands in their faces and hands on the ball often and early. A 9 4, 9 5 run is not a 9 0 run. So that. Trend really shows the work Maryland's been putting in on both ends of the floor. And there will be a foul whistled before the shot. And just as I talk about good defense, Jan Martinez gets caught flat-footed and blown right by by Bayless. First of the commentator. Julian Reese re-enters the game for Maryland. You see the work there from Bayless. He's 6'2", but he plays... You know, a bit bigger. He has that tenacity to him that you need to go up against a Maryland team. And he has 10 points. He's in double figures. 5-9 and nine shooting on the night. Aaron Gray being heckled by the Maryland student section as Iorio scoops it up down low and applies the finish. That ends that 9-0 run for Maryland. Niagara still only made one of their last eight shots from the floor. Here's Young. Backs it out. Now Martinez. Tries to muscle his way in, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Martinez still only those two points, both from the free throw line. Perhaps a bit eager to try to get his first shot, or first bucket from the floor. That'll be the fourth team foul for Maryland. Niagara also has four. The Purple Eagles have five turnovers in the last seven minutes. Is that more the cleanliness of the play that they're not really gathering, or is it just a byproduct of the tempo? I think it's the tempo of the game. Every time they get a rebound, we see Greg Paula saying, slow down, slow down. So I think this game is playing a little faster than the Purple Eagles would have wanted. And that benefits Merrill. Correct. Here's Thomason, defended by Martinez. Thomason still pointless on the day, and he ends it. You're welcome, Noah. Thomason. Noah Thomason, he was 0 for 8 before that. And I guess the blessing of the commentators, what's the opposite of curse of the commentator? Because whatever it is, it worked out. Noah Thomason's favor is he has two points on the afternoon. But three rebounds as well. So he's been getting it done on the other side of the ball just the same. Young peels through the key. Reese pulls it down. Easy finish with the left hand for the big man. Yeah, Reese maybe getting away with a little bit of an elbow at the top of the key while setting that pick, but nonetheless a good roll and an easy finish. Seems like the referees have kind of let them play, if you will. As we back things out with Thomason. Scored on that last Niagara possession. Gets the screen from Iorio. 
through the lane, dumps it down low. The big man puts it off the window and in. Iorio now up to 12 points on the night, leading all scores from both teams. And just like that, Niagara has made three of their last three shots from the floor. It is 50-41. Here's Young, now Carey. Bounce pass to Juju Reese. Through the lane, draws the foul. With seven left on the shot clock. And so we will head into a timeout here in College Park as we've seen some exciting plays so far. It's 50-41. It's Tigers made three of the last three shots from the floor and they brought this within double digits. Yeah, it's all been good movement in the paint that has drawn it. Good penetration or good bounce passes into the painted area. You're back underway with Maryland attacking right to left on your screen at home. Here's Akeem Hart back out to Dante Scott. Up for three, and he got it. Dante Scott, 13 points on the night. He's three of four from behind the arc. He's shooting the lights out of the building. And that's not something we've been able to say about Dante Scott from behind the arc over the last couple of years. No, shot just about 29% from behind the arc last year. Seen a much more confident stroke from him tonight. That was really one of the only things missing from Dante Scott's game was consistently making those shots from deep. Good bounce pass in the middle. Ball is loose. Eventually picked up by Ni Niagara. Four on the shot clock. A three from the far side is no good. They still have not made one from behind the arc tonight. Has Niagara. Josh, as we take a look at Niagara and how they've fared against Power 5 opponents the last couple of years, they haven't done it in several years. But tonight could be a little bit different. Yeah, and Greg Paulus last year went back to the place where he coached <laughs> for a little bit in Ohio State and looking to come to another Big Ten team tonight and pull off an upset. He also did it at Syracuse where he was a football quarterback for his final year of college eligibility. And Young takes it to the hoop and puts it in. So Maryland's now made four of their last four. And now Niagara comes the other way. Thomas and Bayless, Mitchell, Gray, and Iorio, the five on the floor for the Purple Eagles. 55-41 with under six to play. Here's Iorio. He's on four fouls. Don Carey doing the defending. Bayless, six to shoot, through the lane, puts it up with one hand, and gets the roll. Braxton Bayless has looked pretty good tonight. He's kind of been the catalyst for keeping this game as close as it is. Now Maryland picks it up on the other end. Here's Hakeem Hart. He has nine points on three of four shooting. A little behind the back bounce pass, almost kicked out to the far side. Dante Scott, he got it. Are you kidding me? Dante Scott, his fourth three of the night. He's up to 16 points. And the Terps have made five of their last six and jump out to a 58-43 lead. Feels like one of those games from NBA Jam where the rim is on fire. That's what it looks like for Dante Scott right now. <laughs> That's all he's seeing. Three from the far side for Niagara. It was a heat check, but they still come up empty. Oh, five from deep are the Purple Eagles. Here's Don Carey. Fake the pass, goes inside, puts up a mid-range two, and he got it. Clean as you like. Five points for Don Carey, and a timeout on the floor. Terps have made three of their last three, and this lead balloons into a 60-43 advantage. Back here at the Xfinity Center. Action quickly back underway. Niagara looks to take it quickly. Here's Bayless, 20 seconds on the shot clock. They get set up. Bayless, 12 points on the night. All from two, he's six of 10. Now 10 on the shot clock for the Purple Eagles. A little bump there from Young, but Thompson hangs onto it. Pass into the lane, Gray goes up and applies the finish. Silences the Maryland fans that have been chanting air ball at him for about the last seven minutes or so. Maryland has made three of their last three. Niagara has countered that with five of their last seven. So when they say basketball is a game of runs, that is evident here in the last couple minutes. Here's Dante Scott. He goes up with the left hand, left it a little short. And he remains at 16 points. 
so far in the first game of 2022-2023. That one knocked out of possession of Niagara. So that will be on Patrick Amelia. Here, leading the Terps in shots taken, threes taken, and threes made. 16 <laughs> points for the senior out of Philadelphia. He's looked so good tonight. Four of five from behind the arc. He was named for the second time for the Carl Malone Power Forward, you know, watch list of, of the year kind of thing. And he's added this other facet to his game. Obviously, you talked about earlier on, it's tough to make assessments of one game the first of the season, but that has to be promising signs for Kevin Willard. And I would imagine he's not shocked. He's been seeing this in practice from Dante Scott. He tries to strip the ball there and gets tied up on the floor. The same scrappiness, just maybe with a little bit more finesse on the three-point release from Dante Scott. I think there is one thing you can judge from one game, and that's a player's confidence. Yeah. You can tell that he is a more confident shooter than he was a year ago, and that is huge. The Terps will have Western Carolina up next in Binghamton before they head up to Connecticut, the Hall of Fame invitation. See if that confidence can continue for Dante Scott. And there's five seconds on the shot clock for Niagara. One, Mitchell gets the release, left it short off the front of the iron, and Dante Scott there to pull down his fifth board of the night. We approach three minutes left in this game. We've kind of stagnated at 60-45 just a little bit. Here's Jameer Young. He draws the whistle as he was stumbling through the key. It came off that curl really quickly, really sharply, and did a good job of penetrating the lane and forcing the foul out of his defender. So Jameer Young will inbound the ball, the local product from DeMatha. Quickly gets it back from Dante Scott. He puts up a three, and he got it. The late signal by the referee. But Young climbs up to 14 points on the night. Five of ten from the floor in his first three-point bucket in a Terrapin jersey. For comparison, Agra still yet to make a shot from behind the three-point arc. Here's Iorio going against Reese. Iorio over top, left it a bit long, and bodies stumble to the ground. Here's everybody's okay in the collapse of bodies to the ground. Looks like Akeem Hart might have come up a little worse for wear in that encounter. It stays with the Purple Eagles. Lobbed up to Dante Scott. And he will go to the other end and a capital D for Dante Scott to punctuate his evening. Eighteen points for the senior. A 20-point lead for Maryland with two minutes to play. Terps have made five of the last six. Here's Gray. Ten to shoot. Little floater, no good. Dante Scott the rebound. He's up to six. There's only a minute 50 left, but it's safe to say you can put him on double digit or double double watch. He's in 18 points on the night. Don Carey from the corner. A three. Left it a tad long, and Niagara bodies come together. Julian Reese goes up, throws it down, capitalizes on the mistake by Niagara. And the Terps are on a 12-2 run over the last 3 minutes, 45 seconds as we head into a break. Just a box inbound play from the Purple Eagles. And I said it last year, I'll say it again. Don Canada for the Terrapins. There he is wearing the number 35, Mike Cornish in at the number 20. So, Bachelor, Cornish, a million, Swanton Roger, and Jahari Long, the five on the floor for Maryland. Here's Keith Kiner back in the game for Niagara. So we tick down towards a minute to play. Maryland foul on Callum Swanton Roger, his first personal seven. The foul on it, Callum Swanton Roger, his first of the game and first of his collegiate career. And we pick things up with Keith Kiner 
at the line, the junior from Sparta, Illinois. We talked about earlier on, he transferred in from Three Rivers College out in Missouri, where he's a first-team all-region honoree and first-team all-conference selection. Makes no mistake on the first attempt. Ending a scoring drought for the Purple Eagles that was taking closer to three minutes. Kiner sinks the second to put him up to four points on the day. We see Bryce Moore re-enter the game for Niagara. Moore has six points on the day from three of six shooting. Here's Long, double teamed. It's the pass off to Cornish. Lob down to a million. Bachelor's open on the far wing, called for it, but Turf's not able to get it to him. And here's Long as we tick down to a minute left to play. Here's Long, backs it out. Eight on the shot clock. Gets the screen, plays in the middle for Callum Swanton Roger and his first collegiate points for the freshman. Count him for the Canadian. Callum Swan Roger, the first Canadian player for the Terrapins since Justin Jackson, drafted by the Denver Nuggets back in 2018, and a response on the other end by Niagara. 20 point deficit as we tick down to 30 seconds to go. Got a three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Here's Cornish. A million. Floater blocks off the backboard. Kevin Willard stands on the far side with his palms raised to the sky. I think he might be asking for a goaltending, saying that ball was coming down on the Emelian jump because we're going to see here maybe reaching its peak, kind of a hard call to get. Easy when we have replay. But take a look at Kevin Willard there, 15 seconds left in his first Maryland game. And he actually said he's a little superstitious. There was a question raised last week. If the coaches would be wearing suits, if they would be in the casual wear, the polos, quarter zips, as Ike Cornish is at the line for the Terrapins. And he sinks the first attempt, and Willard said, you know, we are going with the suits, we're going with the tie. He said if the tie doesn't work, you will never see the tie again. So he's not superstitious, but he is a little stitious. As Cornish makes the second as well for the Terrapins. are actually the first two points of Ike Cornish's collegiate career. Did not see game action a year ago, and that one's blocked by Bachelor. Five seconds left to go. Cornish will slow this one up at midcourt and let the clock expire on the opening game of the 2022-23 season. Kevin Willard picks up his first win as Maryland's head coach, and we'll be joined by him in just